I'm Nick Balateri. You're about ready to go beyond the baseline. It's Sunday, September 6th, day seven of the 2015 U.S. Open. Live from outside of Arthur Ashe Stadium, this is Beyond the Baseline, presented by Weston. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the show. It is Sunday of Liberty Weekend. Happy holiday, everybody. I'm Julie Alexandria alongside Tim Warhouse. And I have to say, Absolutely the best day we've had out here at the Open. Perfect weather and amazing play out on the courts. I know, and Serena's marching on. We've had a great day of action. You guys excited so far? We've got great stuff. Look at that crowd. And we are marching on to bring you everything that's happening on and off the court. We have an awesome show for you guys tonight. We sure do. I get a chance to sit down with actress Uzo Aduba from Orange is the New Black. She is fantastic and a huge tennis fan. And Tim gets to go to one of the coolest places behind the scenes here at the Tennis Center to check out the Wilson Stringing Room. And we're also going to check out the most awesome viewing party for the U.S. Open. It's called the Match Point Viewing Hour. It's at the Weston in Times Square in New York City. Very cool. But first, let's Let's get to some highlights from the day's gameplay. Let's check out. Check it out. Let's, Let's check go. out today's changeover. Let's changeover. do it. Let's go. And the first match of the day, Marin Chilich, the defending champ, taking on Jeremy Chardy. The champ moving on to the quarters and winning in four sets, six, three, two, six, seven, six, and six, one. Venus Williams proved that she isn't the only Williams sister worth talking about at this year's Open as she sailed yeah. to the quarters, defeating Annette Cotavit, six, two, six, one. And over at Armstrong, Joe Wilfried Tsonga faced off against the upset king of the tournament, Benoit Pair, but he sent him packing, defeating him in straight sets 6 4, 6 3, 6 4. And Serena Williams in an All American showdown against Madison Keys. Serena playing a flawless match, beating Madison Keys 6 3, 6 3, in a very speedy one hour and eight minutes. Of course, now she goes on to face her sister, Venus, in the quarterfinals. And actually, this was very interesting in her post game conference she was talking about how it was all about her serve today it all came down to the serve because she said Madison Keys has such a strong serve she said very poetically I quote it's now or never got to get that serve together and she also complimented the New York audience at Ash which was very cool you know we had Madison Keys on our show a few days ago I thought she was going to give Serena more of a run but Serena just too strong marching on but I think Madison Keys is definitely going to have her time to shine in the near future she has had a fantastic season but Speaking of pros, we got the chance to chat with Justin Gimmelstad. He is the coach of the U.S.'s number one men's player, John Eisner, who's going to be playing Federer tomorrow night here at Arthur Ashe. And we got a chance to ask Justin about all his thoughts on this U.S. Open so far. He is our Open Insider of the Night. Any surprises for you so far? Things that have been expected? Well, the top players have looked really sharp. I mean, Federer has looked incredible. Uh, Djokovic has uh, been excellent for him. The conditions have been a real story here in the beginning of the, beginning of the tournament. It's very hot, very humid. So for players that have been able to get through the early matches without uh, using too much energy and have that energy reserve for later in the tournament, will have a big advantage. And uh, Federer and Djokovic have done just that. Let me ask you about the women's. I think most of the top seeds and top ten have gone out. Yeah, it's been a huge um, surprise. What's been going on here at the Open with the women's? Yeah, it's been shocking. I mean, on, on one hand, there's this, the depth in women's tennis is, is much stronger. So a lot of credit to them. Um, and uh, when you look at the very top, I mean, this is this tournament, both men's and women's, one of the biggest storylines of the year now is about Serena Williams. And can she hold on and win a calendar year Grand Slam? But it has been shocking that uh, so many of the seed women have lost. Uh, but in a way, that's also great. It gives uh, new players the opportunity to shine. I mean, in a tournament like this, um, the, the stories are made by virtue of the tournament. This tournament is so big. And whatever players have success here have the opportunity to make such a name for themselves, not just in tennis, but internationally in multimedia platforms. Uh, so it is a, it, it's great. There's been sometimes in tennis, there's value when the top players consistently win, but there's also value when you have new names emerging as well, and you're seeing that on the women's side in this tournament. And so great to catch up with Justin Gimmelstad, and of course, Eisner has his match. To, Isner has his match tomorrow night with Federer center court here in Arthur Ashe. Huge match for him to try to make it into the quarterfinals. Very cool. Now, I'm going to geek out for just a minute. Just allow me to geek out for a second, okay? Because I got a Beyond the Baseline exclusive with one of my favorite stars, Uzo Aduba. She is from Orange is the New Black, and she is Love so amazing. Show. She is a Emmy winner as well as a current Emmy nominee. Congratulations to her. She is truly amazing. See for yourself. So what brings you to the U.S. Open? 
Um, it's probably my favorite thing. It's like Christmas. I absolutely enjoy the Open. I've been coming to the Open since 2000. A couple girlfriends and I, we came when we were in college. We just started college. We came down. Um, one girlfriend had uh, a boyfriend at the time who had tickets, and we came down. I saw Venus Williams win her final with Lindsay Davenport, and I fell in love. I fell in love with the Open ever since. I've always wanted to be a part of the culture. I've loved tennis since I was a kid, and I've loved the game. So you've had quite a history. Did you ever play? I didn't I didn't play competitively really so much as a child. My mom played tennis a lot competitively, and she had us playing for a little while when we were kids, my siblings and I. And so I played for a couple years, but then uh, set down the racket and picked up my figure skates. I wish I kept going, but yeah, I was like back. Figure skate, are you competitive? Yes, I figure skated for 10 years. Yeah, how far did you go? Um, I, I left skating when, I think it was intermediate, so my intermediate test. Um, okay, so how would you describe the US Open for someone who has never been here before. It is the event of a lifetime. It's fun, it's tennis meeting adventure, it's sport meeting mind, it's community, it's New York at its best. It's just a big fat holiday and it feels like a celebration, a party on the court, you know, and just a time where everybody wants to root for every athlete that's out there and so come and support those they've been fans of, the new people they've come, they, you know, come to learn about or see. Um, it's exciting, it's really exciting. It's the most exciting, I think, of all the uh, slams, probably because it's the most cheerful, <laughs> the loudest, probably. I think of it almost as like the people's tournament in that way. I like that. And who are you most looking forward to seeing? Serena Williams. I love both the Williams sisters. I have to say, I think I have a soft spot in my heart for Venus because that was the first time I ever saw her. So that lives for me. And I've been so excited to watch her. She's, you know, sort of passed through these early rounds. And then Serena has just been so remarkable to watch her over the years and to watch her do really play quite exceptional tennis this past year. And that's been really thrilling. And I would love to see history happen here at home and here in this great city of New York. So that would be exciting. Beautiful. I love that. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Such an awesome chick. And funny little story here. So after that interview was over, she and I basically geeked out about the sport of figure skating as we both had competed in precision, which is like team skating, and also individual competitions almost to a national level. So we thank her for her time and generosity and good luck in the Emmys, Uzo. Now her show, Orange is the New Black, is incredibly hot, almost as hot as the world of social media when it comes to the US Open. So let's check out the heat index. We've got my favorite pictures from the day in social media. Here we have veteran tennis journalist, commentator, and historian Bud Collins, who was honored today at the Tennis Center and at the Media Center as well. And here's a little vintage photo of him interviewing the late Arthur Ashe. And speaking of Arthur Ashe, check out this photo. This really captures the breadth of this U.S. Open event. This photo was taken from the tippy top, the promenade level at Arthur Ashe Stadium, overlooking Armstrong, Louis Armstrong Stadium right here. And if you can tell, I feel like a weather person right now. If you tell, this is a merchandise octagon. So if you guys find yourself here at the U.S. Open, you have to come right here because our stage where I'm standing is right about here. We're right at the base of Arthur Ashe, right across from Louis Armstrong and right next to the merch octagon. So pick yourself up a t-shirt, come see our show at 7 p.m. live every day. And Venus, you know, I was talking to some people in the crowd and they had said she seemed so relaxed and that she seemed like her old self. So this should be very interesting when she goes up against her sister Serena in the quarterfinals. And here she is. And when asked about going up against her sister Venus in her post-game interview, Serena said, well, Either way, a Williams sister will make it to the semifinals. Although her body language seemed a little ambivalent, but I'm sure she's looking forward to it. She also said she's gonna take the rest of the, uh, the day off and just kind of relax. She wasn't gonna practice. She was gonna relax and get ready for her next quarterfinals. And now Tim goes beyond the baseline in what is absolutely one of the coolest places here at the Billie Jean King Tennis Center. He goes to the Wilson Stringing Room. Now this is a place where the pros and the juniors go to get their rackets strung and ready for action. Check it out. Dustin, let me ask you first, how many rackets will you guys be stringing during the U.S. Open? We'll probably do close to 5,000 rackets this year. 5,000 rackets, yes. so right from the start of the Open all the way through? Yeah, through the qualities and then to the very end of the turn. I read that the quality of the racket is all about the quality of the string. Is that true and how important is stringing to the players? Well, it's very important. It's the only thing that touches the ball, so tension is very important, whether it's too tight, too loose. Tell me a little about the players. Do people like Serena Williams have preferences for how they like their rackets and how do they convey that to you guys? Well, they, all the players come in with their string and when they show up with their string, they tell us what tension they want. We string the rackets to that tension and then according to the elements, whether it's hot, they'll go up in tension sometimes, it's cool to go down and then we'll make minor adjustments during the event. Sometimes you guys are needed out in court. Have you ever had to uh, join any on-court emergencies and, and what are those typical on-court emergencies that happen that you guys are needed? 
When they need a, a racket during a match, they'll send it with the ball boys. The ball boys will bring it to us, we'll string it as quick as we can and get it back out to them. What type of scenarios occur? Have there been any of those here? And those are, are those like kind of red alert emergencies for you guys? It happens every day. So we generally try to have it done and back out to out the door in 18 minutes. I just want to ask you, how has stringing evolved over the last 10 years? Because I remember when I was starting out, my mom gave me like one of those wood rackets. Uh, yeah. It seems like we've come a long way. What has changed in tennis? Well, the, the rackets are much better, for one. Um, and then the biggest probably difference is polyester. The stiffer strings give the players more control so they can hit the ball harder and keep the ball on the floor. Back probably 15, 20 years ago, a lot of players were using a lot of gut, natural gut, which is really lively and the ball flies on you more. Um, and now it's polyester and then a, a lot of players are now using polyester and gut. How does one make it here? Because you guys have to be the best of the best. To get on the Wilson team, you have to go through training. Okay. So after you go through a couple days of training, then you're evaluated on whether you're good enough to make it. We want to thank you for uh, letting us check this out. It's really great, amazing to see the work that's going on here. And you guys are working as hard as anyone to make sure these players have the best rackets. You know, that was so cool just to get behind the scenes of all the things that are going on here at the US Open to make it happen. We have professionals and experts everywhere. And of course, the US Open is one of the best in events in New York City, if not the best event. But if you can't make it out here with us at the Tennis Center, our friends at Weston have your back. That's right. Weston Times Square in New York City is hosting Match Point Hour. So that is basically the ultimate viewing party for the U.S. Open. And our special correspondent, Mara Montalbano, went over the East River through Midtown traffic, and she went to go check it out. So now you guys can see it in this On the Road presented by Weston. Thanks, guys. I'm here at the Westin in Times Square, and I'm so pumped to check out Match Point Hour. It's the ultimate fan experience for those of you who can't make it out to Flushing Meadows. Let's go see what's happening. Ready for some wee tennis, Kira? Yeah. All right, let's go. Here comes. Oh, good one. You got me. Good job. That's it for me here at Match Point Hour at the Westin Times Square, New York. And we're going to be here each night through September 10th from 6.30 to 9. You should definitely come on down, check it out. There's lots of tennis fun to be had. Now let's go back to you guys at the Tennis Center. The round of 16 action comes to a close tonight on Ash as Roberto Bautista Agut takes on number one seed Novak Djokovic. Djokovic is 2-0 against Bautista Agut, who is looking to make his first quarterfinal appearance ever at a Grand Slam. And following that, Kristina Mladenovic of France faces off against Ekaterina Makarova of Russia. They have met twice with Makarova winning both meetings. And every night we like to go and profile one of the players here at the Open tonight. Makarova is our one to watch. Monica Seles was one of the top names in tennis in the 90s and the early aughts. So we're going to take a look back at one of her greatest moments here in Flushing on Today in U.S. Open History. here at the U.S. Open and all week. Tim and I have seen fans walking around with these blue glasses with pink, what well, looks like pink drink inside with these uh, green melon balls on top. And that, of course, is the Honey Deuce. That is a signature cocktail made with Grey Goose vodka and a little bit of lemonade, as I learned. It's been the signature cocktail of the U.S. Open for the past nine years. So I had a chance to jump over the bar at the Grey Goose Bar here at the U.S. Open to find out exactly what goes into it, how it's made, and, uh, yeah, how it tastes. Check it out. I'm here at the Grey Goose Bar at the U.S. Open with my buddy bartender Ryan here, who's going to show me how to make the signature cocktail of the U.S. Open, the Honey Juice, and of course named for good reason. Absolutely. How would you describe the taste? Sweet, yet refreshing, and just a good amount of vodka. Now, I've been walking around the past seven days here, and I have seen people with these in hand enjoying them so much. They're so popular. It's our most popular drink, and really I would assume that 
you can't really come to the U.S. Open without having a honeydews. It seems kind of like tradition. And I can't come here to the Grey Goose Bar without learning how to make one. So show me, what do we do? Well, the first thing we do is we grab our diggers. Okay. All right, cheers. Cheers. All right, and we fill it up, just one easy shot in each one. Do you want me to pour yours? Please. All right, cool. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Okay. All right. Ooh. And then we fill it up with our very own special lemonade. Okay, so we got vodka, Bo we got lemonade. We got lemonade. That sounds amazing on its own. It's already good, but we still got more to come. It get better. Raspberry liqueur on top, sprinkle, sprinkle, bam. Now, Okay. step one and two, three are done. Okay. Let's garnish. Do we have to mix it or you just let it kind of settle? I kind of like to see it pour in. It seems more, I don't know, pretty. It's artistic. And garnished with three honeydew balls. Now these are perfect and obviously reminiscent of the three tennis balls that come in a Wilson can. How perfect. It's just so perfect, I can't stand it. Cheers, Ryan. Cheers. And there you go, the Honey Deuce, the official drink here at the U.S. Open, made with Grey Goose. Can't wait to see what this tastes like. I actually haven't tried one yet. And it's day seven. Where have I been? I think it's time. Working. Let's it is it. time. Cheers. Cheers. That is good. Perfect for a summer day watching tennis. Thank you so much, Ryan. You okay? All right. He's good. It's strong and it's good. You can check him out here at the U.S. Open. The Honey Deuce, the official drink of the past nine years at the U.S. Open. Thanks, Ryan. You're welcome. All right, well, Venus and Serena may be the sister act on the courts, but off the courts, we've got two brothers who are about to throw down. You guys ready to play some Fandemonium? Ready. Go. Okay, what is your name? Dimitri. Dimitri, and? Alex. And Alex, all right. All right, so we've got the brothers. You guys are playing Olympic fencer or professional tennis player. Very simple game. I'm going to say a name. You say Olympic fencer or tennis player. The first one to three is going to win a prize from our friends at Weston. Are you guys ready? Ready. Here we go. Wozniak. Tennis player. Wrong, that's an Olympic fencer. <laughs> Vitalia Diachenko. Tennis player. That is correct. Julia Gavrilova. Tennis player. That is incorrect, that is also a fencer. <laughs> Alexei Yakomenko. Fencer. That is correct. <laughs> Evgeny Donskoy. Tennis player. No, that's a, no, no, you got that one right. Sorry, that is a tennis player. I got one wrong there. This is for the win, right? He's got the first two. Tim Morehouse. Tennis player. No, that's me! That's him! That's him. Oh my god! Wow. How'd you get that one? That's an Olympic silver medalist fencer. Okay, back to you. Stanislav Pozniakov. Tennis player. That is a fencer. I'm so sorry. Oh. Five-time world champion. Okay, for the win, Keith Smart. Mm, fencer? That is correct! That's nice three! Man. We got our winner! Got our Congratulations! Winner. The first ever Olympic fencer, professional tennis player game. Congratulations! Let's hear it for these guys, our contestants up on stage! And here you are, Alex. You are, you are winning from your prize, from Weston. Thanks so much for playing. I'm a little upset, though, you didn't get me, Tim Morehouse. But They're connected I'd rather be a tennis player anyway. <laughs> Right. All right, awesome. guys, that Thanks, is guys. our show for today. We've got some great tennis coming up. And, of course, we'll be back here every night, 7 p.m., <laughs> Julie and I, beyond the baseline. Hope you'll join us. All right, Thank for you. Tim Morehouse, I'm Julie Alexandria. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks. Nice job. Very good. Thank you. Great job. <laughs>